How much have Tesla's batteries improved over the years, and why does it even matter? I'm Jonathan, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. As I've discussed in a lot of past videos, Tesla is constantly improving their products, whether that be software or actual hardware itself. However, Tesla is constantly improving some of the most important parts of their cars that are not commonly seen or talked about. And in this video, we're going to dive into specific details about how Tesla has improved their batteries over the years, since the original Roadster all the way till now the new battery tech they unveiled at Battery Day. Let's now dive into the evolution of Tesla's battery tech and why it matters. First of all, over the last decade or so, Tesla has used two different form factors for their batteries, the 18650 cell and also the 2170 cell. Also at battery day, they introduced the larger 4680 cell. Now don't let these numbers confuse you. This simply refers to the height and diameter of the cell. An 18650 cell, for instance, has an 18 millimeter diameter and a 65 millimeter height. We're going to dive into the details of each one of these form factors and talk about different aspects of it, starting with the 18650 cells found in the Model S, the Model X, and also the original Tesla Roadster. The original Roadster used off-the-shelf Panasonic 18650 lithium-ion cells, but this was actually revolutionary at the time. A Clean Technica article from 2015 notes that, quote, in 2008, the Tesla Roadster becomes the first production electric vehicle to use lithium ion battery cells, as well as the first production electric vehicle to have a range over 200 miles on a single charge. Tesla also used these 18650 cells in the Model S and the Model X, and they also continue to use these in the modern versions of the Model S and the Model X. However, these 18650 cells found in the current versions of the Model S and the Model X are not the same exact batteries, nor are they in the same kind of battery packs as they originally were. While the outside form factor of these batteries are the same, the internals and the battery packs themselves have changed a lot over the years. On a basic macro level, the chemistry that Tesla prefers and uses in their batteries is a nickel cobalt aluminum chemistry or NCA chemistry. And as far as we know, this NCA chemistry is still what they use in these 18650 batteries. However, they have added some other tweaks over the years. Now, while many of these changes were actually achieved by adding more cells to the battery pack, there were some changes that we learned about that were not only adding cells, but actually were adding tweaks to the chemistry of these cells. For instance, when Tesla went from an 85 kilowatt hour pack to a 90 kilowatt hour pack, this was achieved by adding silicon to the anode. According to his Autoblog article from 2015, the bigger pack was due to improved cell chemistry as Musk talked about in a conference call. Quartz also pointed out that this tweak was the addition of silicon to the battery. Quote from Elon Musk, it's a baby step in the direction of using silicon in the battery anode. So that's one of the tweaks we know about, and I have no doubt that Tesla has continued to add more silicon to the anode to increase the energy density of these batteries. However, although we do not have exact details on the different tweaks that Tesla has made on their batteries and their battery packs over the years, we do see the evidence of some of these tweaks in things like charging speed. According to my research and also evcompare.io, when Tesla had the 60, 70, 75, 85, and 90 kilowatt hour packs, at various times the max charge rates were limited from 90 kilowatts to 120 kilowatts. For instance, the original 2012 Model S, the batteries that shipped with that vehicle, could only accept a charge of up to 90 kilowatts. Through various battery pack revisions over the years, those same sizes of battery packs could go up to 120 kilowatt charging. Also, Tesla has increased the max charge rate over the years for even the 100 kilowatt hour pack with various pack revisions. At one point, this 100 kilowatt hour pack could only accept 200 kilowatts. Then they increased that to 225 kilowatts, and the current version can accept up to 250 kilowatts. So these improvements definitely point to the fact that there were some cooling improvements, some battery management system improvements, but also I believe there were also cell chemistry improvements as well. Now let's move over to the 2170 cells currently found in the Model 3 and the Model Y. 
In 2014, Tesla signed an agreement with Panasonic to build their joint Gigafactory, Gigafactory Nevada, that currently builds the 2170 cells. These 2170 cells are a little larger than, of course, the 18650 cells found in the Model S and Model X. And because of this, they were able to gain 50% more energy. They not only gained 50% more energy, but they also gained 100% more power. According to this Clean Technica article, which quotes the late Jack Rickard and his breakdown of the Model 3 and the Model S battery packs, the energy density of the 18650 cells and also the 2170 cells are as follows. As you can see from this chart, the energy and the energy density slightly went up from the 18650 to the 2170 cell, just slightly there by around 7 watt hours per kilogram. However, the biggest change is notice when you move from the cell level to the pack level and the energy density at the pack level. According to that Clean Technica article quoting Jack Rickard, the energy density at the pack level for the Tesla Model S and Model X pack, at least the one he tested, was around 126.7 watt hours per kilogram. However, the 2170 cell was able to improve this because of the larger form factor to 159.5 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level. Just for an example, if you look at the weight of a 75 kilowatt hour battery at the pack level with these two different cells, there's around a 21% weight reduction even with the same amount of kilowatt hours because of this pack level energy density gain. This increased energy density of course leads to a reduction in the weight of the battery pack found in the Model 3 and the Model Y and this also makes the vehicle a little bit more efficient because it's not having to drag around that extra weight. These larger cells also mean that you have to put less of these 2170 cells in the battery pack which makes it easier and faster to manufacture. This is one of the ways that Tesla was able to introduce a more cost effective vehicle, the Model 3 and of course recently the Model Y. So we've talked about the current batteries that Tesla is using in their production vehicles. Now I'd like to dive to their largest form factor, the one they just announced at Battery Day. That is the 4680 cell. According to Tesla, moving from the 2170 cell to the 4680 cell means that you gain five times more energy, a 16% range increase, and also six times more power. Just as there is a cost advantage and also a manufacturing advantage moving from an 18650 to a 2170 cell, there is also a huge advantage from moving to a 2170 cell to a 4680 cell. This large tabless cell offers huge cost and manufacturing efficiency improvements. And when you combine this with other technologies like their dry battery electrode technology, this leads to a 56% reduction in the cost per kilowatt hour of batteries. Thanks to the tabless design in this new battery cell, Tesla is able to have a large cell and still cool it properly when charging and when discharging very quickly. According to a tweet from Elon Musk, these batteries will mostly be for the semi, the Cybertruck, and the new upcoming Roadster. When you compare the 18650 cell to the 2170 cell, there's a 50% energy increase from one to the next. But when you move from a 2170 cell to a 4680 cell, there is a 500% energy increase. Based on my research, the energy found in an individual 2170 cell is around 17.3 watt hours. So using Tesla's estimate, five times the energy would mean that the energy found in the 4680 cell is around 86.5 watt hours. Also, as we mentioned, the power increase from the 18650 to the 2170 cell is around 100%, but the power increase from the 2170 to the 4680 is around 600%. So with this six times increase, the 4680 cell should have approximately a 36 amp rating. Earlier in this video, we talked about the energy density gains at the pack level by moving from the 18650 cell to the 2170 cell. And although we don't have enough specifics about the 4680 cells to make the same calculations, I do expect the gains to be very impressive. At Battery Day, when Elon was discussing the structural battery packs, one of the slides they presented showed what is referred to as a cell-to-pack design, referring to how a battery pack is assembled. As you can see in this graphic, the top example shows the existing cell-to-module-to-pack design, and the bottom example is a cell-to-pack design. 
By skipping modules, Tesla is able to put less packing materials because there's not different modules to connect together, and this leads to more energy density at the pack level. According to this article from Clean Technica, CATL's current cell to pack design allows them to improve energy density at the pack level by about 10 to 15 percent. So when you add up all the energy density gains at the cell level with the energy density gains with the cell to pack design, this all leads to a lighter battery pack with more energy potential and as Tesla mentioned at battery day, this could all lead to a 54 percent range increase with all of the improvements that Tesla mentioned. So in conclusion, whenever someone mentions that Tesla has no battery advantage, they really don't have any battery technology advantage, just point them to facts in this video that show that Tesla does have a huge advantage when it comes to battery tech. Especially a battery tech that was talked about at Battery Day, which will change electric vehicles and really make the Semi, the Roadster, and also the Cybertruck a possibility. Tesla, like no other auto manufacturer, is poised to dominate EVs for the coming future because of battery technology like we talked about. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I publish new videos. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make these videos that I put out on YouTube possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.